probably way back just growing up, you know, having experiences where you see homeless people and you're curious and you go on and you're with your parents coming home from church and your dad is giving this guy a dollar and you're feeling good and having a family unit type of thing and then the guy is a little too aggressive and then my dad shoves him away all of a sudden and it's like this nice you know, innocent little moment just turns kind of weird and you realize the complexity of those interactions and um, things like that kind of stayed with me and then, you know, um, you know, and also just from being a filmmaker, I, I kind of have um, very little shame and just uh, an ability to go up to people, I guess, you know, partly because of curiosity. And I was able to meet some, some good ones that were open, you know. Um, but yeah, you know, like anyone, just kind of curious. And, yeah. um, what made you think of the speeches or how did Um, I had them all, like I had the idea beforehand and I had um, a lot of the speeches beforehand. Um, and, uh, you know, but like 30 maybe speeches and then I would see what people liked but I would make suggestions. And, but I wanted to really make make sure they liked it and, you know. Right. And, um, you know, and I really tried to take a lot of time to explain why I, I thought it was good for them. And which is kind of good because I think we were talking earlier today that documentary filmmakers should talk more to their subjects and tell them what they feel instead of just being an interviewer who says, so why this or why that, you know? But go ahead and let yourself be vulnerable on the table and tell them about your greatest fears and, and what you suck at, you know, because they're up there show, you're showing it all hang out, you know? So. Uh, um, I'm been clean and sober now for 302 days, so a lot of things turned out for me. That's not because of the film, though. I mean, no, no. I, I had tried treatment before, and uh, I, I got back out there. Because the first time I went to treatment, I didn't have any support when I got out. And it didn't take me long to just ball right back into the bottle. So, uh, but the second time I went through, I had more support. Uh, they, they got me housing and set me up with the right uh, medical and mental help that I needed. Uh, and yeah, so I'm still in housing, so it's, uh, it's different to be in a house. I uh, lived 10 years on the street, so um, it was it's nice. Nice to be able to cook your meal and watch TV and shower whenever you want to, do your laundry. But I'm hoping to get permanent housing now soon. But uh, I, as you saw in the movie, I was doing the smile thing, and I, I'm still doing that today. There, I'm still down there, first and Mary. Um, if you go by first and Mary, I'll make you smile. <laughs> started out, I was just, I sit there and I would drink and I had my little cup out and I just had a smile sign, you know. Well, at first it was a sign that said, you know, I'm broke, I'm homeless, I'm hungry. And it was all I, I, I. But uh, I got tired of watching people go from work to home, home to work, you know, kind of dragging their chins across the ground. So I thought, you know, well, what could I do to, you know, help them out, you know, kind of change their attitude or whatever, you know. And that's when Smile came up, and um, it's been there ever since. And, well, I, I, you know, I don't ask for anything. Uh, I go completely by donations, you know. Um, and with the, with the help I'm getting now, uh, those donations, you know, help me, you know, do my laundry and stuff like this, you know, things that the government doesn't give me, you know, help with, you know, housing and um, cash and uh, medical and, and food, so. Yeah, it's just benefits. I got a little. I've got a basket out there now, but it's just just because so many people, you know, where's your basket? You know, where's your basket? So I put one out there, but I don't ask for anything.